Hello, I am Lisa Ware and Rhythms of the Goddess is, this is episode 10. We're talking here today about the lunar eclipse energy and the full moon, which is really incredible. So there's some things that I wanted to share with you about this full moon that I think are really fantastic and super uh, insightful for you. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a short broadcast, you know, 15 minutes or so. So the purpose here is to share with you kind of what's happening in the universe and how we can tap in as really connection to the divine feminine and just have that uh, connection with each other as we go through this lunar cycle, this new decade, navigate this new energy. So I would love to see a poll on how you feel. And so I'm not sure, but I've heard from a lot of women in our goddess tribe. They have and along with myself, had a real slow start to this new year. So not slow, meaning like unproductive, because productivity is kind of measured in a new way with this new ascension energy. It's not a linear push through, like check shit off your to-do list kind of thing. This is about what is going to create the goal for a marathon versus a hundred yard dash. So we are not in the place of a hundred yard dash anymore. I know many of us in previous years, by December 31st or December 30th, we've had all of our ducks in a row and have all of our goals lined out for January and everything that's you know coming up for you is all in a row and everything's you know all just planned out. And not so much this new decade. It's really been a, a step back into receptivity and it has a lot to do with these full moons and these eclipses that are happening. And, you know, we can just say that's a bunch of woo woo, but honestly, this is real. This is real. These energies are very powerful and we are a vessel of skin and bones that contain energy. And so we cannot deny that these energies affect us. And they affect us in major ways, not just, oh, well, that's just woo-woo. That's just something that's going to not affect me. It does affect us. And so I want to share with you on how we can navigate this. Now, many of us that are listening to this are already, you know, definitely very tapped in energetically, very intuitive, very empathic. And so if you are, you're feeling these energies. And I would love to see what you feel like you've um, had shift from the first to the 10th, which is right now as we're recording this live of the, of the new decade. So these first 10 days, I have had so much introspection and time with my family. I've been doing a lot of cooking at home. I've received some really amazing gifts from my family. I got an instant pot, so I've been doing some nourishing soups. I got a really great cooker. So I've been doing some roasted root vegetables and things like that. And it's been really, really good just to step back, reflect, sleep more, and spend more time with people that I love. And instead of just like a horse busting out of the gate at a rodeo, I am setting up for the long haul. And I talked to you last week about trajectory. And so talking about the trajectory of where we're at and where we're gonna be in 10 years, and you can find that on my blog, um, Lisa Ware, excuse me, just yogaforlove.com and just look up the blog talking about the goals and goal setting. And many of you that receive my emails have received that. So one year, three year, five years, 10 years out and thinking about where we are like right now and then just staying in that perfect alignment of that sacred path. And if we step out of alignment, even just one degree, um, and we don't snap ourselves back into that alignment of where we're, where our sacred path is and where we really want to align our dream life to be, then in 10 years, we are going to be way, way over there. And so we must figure out ways that we can have foundations that are very, very strong and that we can have these places that we can come back to where we can center ourselves. And so this lunar eclipse is one of those times and so stepping into this, this moment of this eclipse energy, which is really funny because things that I put on my calendar, especially energy work and Reiki trainings, 
and even all of my retreats, even my start dates for the online training programs, they're all centered around the lunar cycles because I kid you not, and I'm not gonna lie, every time I set a Reiki training up that's not on the new moon or the full moon or right in that 72 hour window, it gets canceled and it has to be rescheduled. Someone does, can't come, I can't do it, something happens. I have even just gotten to the point where I don't even schedule Reiki trainings unless I've looked at my moon calendar. And that's how powerful this energy is. Yesterday, we had a master teacher training for two women, which got rescheduled from the end of last year because it needed to happen right here on this beautiful full moon energy. So as we're recording this, I had recorded it a little bit ago and my sound was off and I had to re-record. So here I am live for you right now. So this particular broadcast wanted to be recorded right at the moment of the eclipse. So if you're watching this in the Northern Hemisphere, you cannot see the lunar eclipse because it's daytime, but you can feel this receptive energy. So the shadow of the earth is going to go um, in front of the moon and the reflection of that lunar energy onto our planet is going to be paused. So this is literally like you do the hard reset, like you get your phone and you press all those little secret buttons so that it does that hard reset and it completely restarts. So in 15 minutes, you're going to have that full effect of the hard reset of your whole entire energetic body. So the energy from the moon gets cut off. It reboots. It's literally like pressing and holding down and restarting your laptop. And so that's what's happening. This energy revolves around things such as home and family and our inner foundation. And these energies will likely shed, lightly, likely shed the light on areas that you have mentally and spiritually outgrown. The most challenging part about this, ladies, you might not feel ready to let go of whatever's been weighing you down. So this is a time for you to really reflect. And as I was mentioning about the vision board workshop, if you do not have any white space on your vision board, you do not have any room for creating new projects, for new growth, for all of those beautiful things that the universe has in store for you. So you have to create white space. Anyone that's ever painted on a canvas or any artist has ever known that you can overpaint and you have, can have this beautiful painting, but that last final brush stroke makes everything brown and you're like, damn it, you know, I just shouldn't have, I just painted too much. I did too much. I put too much on my canvas. And so that's when you take that whiteboard and that, that white paint and completely clear off your canvas and start fresh. And that's exactly what's happening right now. So what can you remove out of your life right now that needs to happen so you can have the dream life that you really, really desire and that you envision and that you feel it within your heart. You yearn for it. You've seen it. So clear all that stuff out. So no matter what happens, remember that the 2020 January eclipse right now will take you exactly to where you're meant to be because your destiny calls for it. There are no accidents. Major life events coincide with the eclipses. So this is in time where relationships come together as well as breakups happen. I can name on probably two hands all the people that are close to me that are going through major things. Breakup, quitting their job and starting their new job, starting a new career, moving into their dream path, starting their yoga training, starting completely new projects, starting new businesses, leaving um, people out of their life that they just no longer want to resonate with, um, kicking people out of their homes, moving to new countries. I mean, all this stuff is happening as a collective and God says we are here to support each other as a collective so we can be on this path and this journey together. We're not in this alone. And if you ever feel alone, please don't ever hesitate to reach out. One of the best places to reach that I have in my toolkit is the Yoga for Love Global Goddess Tribe on Facebook. And so right now that little alarm sounded, it is right now the eclipse. And so this is the opportunity for you to have the dreams where you fully, you fully fully muster up that courage to step into it. The reason an eclipse carries so much magnitude is because these lunar nodes are illuminated on the north and the south. So this reveals the person that you're meant to become and in turn it purges you of what is no longer meant to be. So the lunar nodes symbolize the energy that humanity 
as a collective, we are striving and moving towards. So our perspective is coming from a place of compassion. And that is really what's so important right now is to move through empathy and utilize empathy, but also have very clear boundaries on where your energy field is and not allowing people to step into your energy or steal your energy from you any longer. So pulling everything back into this present moment and really stepping into that place of filling up your own cup. So I've used the cup analogy in several different ways, but so if your cup is already full with all kinds of stuff that you might not even want in your cup, you're going to have to dump some of your cup out. So you can take and throw it out into the street, you can drink it, you can do whatever you need to do, but you need to create some space so you can fill up whatever needs to come into your cup to create that beautiful life that you have in full balance of your mental life, your spiritual life, your emotional life, and your physical life. So all of your four bodies must need to be taken care of in this cup. So this lunar eclipse is happening in a climactic moment for the whole entire world. As you can see, there's cataclysmic events going on across and the divine feminine is rising up. And as we rise up as divine feminine, masculine can also rise up with their divine feminine. And the divine masculine is yearning to be a part of this rising up because it has been so patriarchal and so linear and so driven from the old ways for so long that it is shifting and it's happening right now. So we can help with our intentions, our prayers, lifting up and bringing our own joy and our own gratitude into our own hearts. And that helps to fuel the collective of our planet. So always know that every little action and every little thought that you make has a butterfly effect and you are affecting things in a positive way by living out your truth and living out your life in a beauty way. So there are things that need to take place right now. And knowing that you're ready to embrace change, there's nothing to fear. Change is always something that's going to rise up for you. And it's, it is the only constant in this universe. It literally is the only constant. And so as you figure out that, okay, I'm going to have to sit with change, things are going to change, then you're going to feel resistance. It is a psychological pattern. It has been studied. Many of my mentors teach on this. And as you go around your little circle of life and your little patterns, pretty soon as you come up to something that you're really excited about, you're ready to do, you're creating something new, you're moving forward, you're stepping into that place of power, and then er, right at the 11th hour, bam, you hit resistance every single time. Every single time, you can count on it. Don't be surprised, it's gonna happen. So just know. That's the archetype of Ganesha. He's going to throw something into your path, whether it's a fireball or whether it's a snowball or a giant log or whether it's something you have to dive under and go deep and come out and emerge from the other side like a mermaid. So how is it that you're supposed to tackle that resistance? You're going to flow with it. You're not going to push and force. You're going to allow. And so as you allow that resistance to happen, you sit with it, you move through it, you move past it, you move around it, or you may just allow it to be and just let it be. And then you get to that point where you're at that 12 o'clock and you passed it and you're like, okay, yes, now it's time. And so in this lunar eclipse, it's taking place in the sign of cancer, which is protective, emotional, caring, and it reveals things that will hit incredibly close to home. It's things that are forcing us to reevaluate our perspective of compassion and how we practice empathy. So in order for our growth to take place, these walls must come crashing down. Sometimes we need to destroy something so we can have the freedom to create something new. And so that is what we need to sit with. What needs to be destroyed? What needs to be moved out if you haven't yet cleared out those roadblocks? Um, yesterday, I did a really cool practice um, on my Instagram TV for removing blockages out of your chakras. And you can do this with a partner. Um, if you haven't been on my Instagram, it's yoga for love Lisa with the number four. And so basically it's a uh, 
physical practice that you can do to move energy out. And it also releases trigger, trigger points out of your glutes, which is so powerful. Um, so there's so many ways that you can remove roadblocks energetically, emotionally, and physically, but we need to have tools to do that. So change is happening in every sense of the word. And in fact, you might feel that you were perceiving the word both conscious world, both consciously and subconsciously and being challenged to your limits. You might be pushed to the brink and most likely right now that's what's happening. And for many of us, I would love to hear what's happening for you because these things have been rising up and this is not, you know, small things. These are major, major life events that are happening for us. And so ladies, I encourage you to be courageous and open your heart, share in our Facebook group what's going on with you. Please don't sit in the closet and hide. We have to shed light on our shadow. And that's exactly what's happening right now is as we sit in this beautiful lunar energy, as the lunar energy is just cut off from the planet, it is forcing us to reflect on that shadow. So what has our shadow self been telling us? What do we need to sit with? And I was recently gifted with the ability to sit with this beautiful medicine called Combo. And there's so many things that we bury within ourselves. And as much work as I have done, I had some major things rise up and they came in the form of grief. And so what can you allow to rise up and bubble forth out of you so you can create that space within you? What can you sit with that you've been swallowing down, you've been packing so much crap onto your calendar that you've been covering it up, you've been going on adrenal fatigue, where can you step back and create that space so you can sit with your shadow? Ladies, we can't run from our shadow. Our shadow is always gonna be there and as soon as the sun reappears, bam, there's our shadow. So you know, um, you've probably seen those little Facebook gifts where the baby sees their shadow and you know freaks out, does that startle reflex? So yeah, the shadow can be startling. It really can. Um, but we start to shed that light on it. So right now, sit with it, reflect, journal, write. There's no reason to come running a hundred yard dash at the beginning of a new decade. This is the marathon. So this lunar eclipse brings us challenges and we need to be open to all angles and all perspectives. Even um, myself reflecting on a place of being in compassion. And I had that lesson just given to me just this week. So bringing a surge of creativity right now is what's happening. Kindness, spirituality, stop and smell the roses, count your many blessings and find the beauty in your situation. Your gratitude will get you so far. Gratitude is the way that I begin my day every day. And you can start just by being thankful for your bed as Louise L. Hay suggests. And before your feet even hit the floor, be grateful for dozens of things. If not, you can be grateful for a hundred things before your feet even hit the floor. So walking in the beauty way is the way of the Native Americans. And this is the way that we walk this red road, this path that we are on. And looking for signs wherever we go from Mother Earth, there are no accidents. You are here now, so be here now. Such teachings from these great ones, such as Ram Das, have always shared how to be fully pr present in every single moment with every single sign. So if that bird flies in front of you and lands on that branch and starts singing a song, that's not an accident. If that beautiful leaf falls in front of you where you're about to step and it's in the beautiful shape of a heart, that's not an accident. So look for these signs from your surroundings. Start with gratitude and end with courage. Rise up, sisters. It is time for us to rise up as a collective and to hold space for each other. If you don't have a tribe, connect with our tribe in the Global Goddess Tribe. And let's do this. We are all in this together to support each other on this sacred path. I look forward to seeing you. This has been episode 10 of Rhythms of the Goddess. I'll see you next Friday. Namaste. Thank you.